Welcome, dear friends, to Cardiac Radio at 11 p.m., nourishing our souls with one more Immortal Messages. Immortal Messages is based on the book Psychophonic Instructions. Several spirits through Chico Xavier, as you can see in the background image right here, Chico Xavier, during a mediumistic meeting, channels messages that can be true lessons for us, empowering us to new understanding about our mind, which is so essential, and about life. Today, the message is about feelings. An illuminated spirit named Olus comes and delivers a message that may be truly transformative. Feelings. We are living in an era in which people are little by little surrendering to the fact that there is an emotional being in us but it's not simple why we're going to say this because for generations we have been denying that feelings are important we're little by little in our society giving room to the fact that we feel that we're not only thinking beings, but we have feelings. Before we talk about vibrations, before we talk about spirituality, we need to talk about our emotional intelligence. The spirit of Olos, Cesar Naldo Rocha, came on December 1952. And he, as an altruistic spiritual instructor, spoke to us about feelings as the basis of our mental life. Remember, Emmanuel writes the book Thought and Life in 1958. Spirit Olos, as an instructor, comes in 1954 to talk about similar ideas. In the basis of our mental life, feelings comes first. They come first and then thoughts. Many people don't know about it. Today, we're going to learn more. Offering us an interesting educational concept on the subject and emphasizing our inner communion with the Divine Master that we need to consolidate to achieve inner balance and inner improvement. What a joy for us, right? Spirit Olives, loving, altruistic, comes to deliver the message. Friends, in our relationship with the Lord, with our fellow beings, with life, with nature, it is important to remember that our own soul produces the subtle patterns that guide us in our daily activities. As much as the safety of a building corresponds to the project, to the project to which it is subordinated, the success or failure in our small endeavors corresponds to our spiritual attitude. We know in photography, you remember in photo, before the digital photography, we used to have the printouts, the photo cliches, cliches remember? the negative image obtained in the dark room from which we can extract innumerable positive proofs. In the same way, thought is the matrix that we compose in our inner being with which it is possible to create infinite manifestations of our individuality. But the formation of this negative proof the photo cliché depends on the sensitive film, which in our case is the feeling before any elaboration of mental order. It is imperative to always improve our acquisitions of fraternity, of understanding and sympathy. The star is known for the light it gives off from itself. 
the presence of the flower is manifested by the perfume that it's that is its own characteristic and the individual is identified by the radiations it pro that he or she projects we absorb ideas assimilate and externalize them every day therefore it is important that in our exchange with one another we observe our states of feeling on the basis of our reflections and reasonings as the origins of our victory or our defeat in the struggles of daily life. Hold on. Illustrating this unpretentious conceptualization, let us evoke nature to symbolize some of our feelings and clarify as much as possible the lesson that experience offers to us. Hatred is comparable to the hyena spreading terror and death. Envy is like the serpent that crawls, emitting rays of venomous magnetism. Jealousy looks like a famished wolf extending distress and mistrust. Aggressiveness resembles the hedgehog hurling thorns in the direction of those who breathe their presence. Love is comparable to the sun that warms and illuminates. Understanding copies friendly, the friendly water source. Fraternal tolerance is like a tree that always serves and always helps. Kindness is the, the sister of constructive music, unfolding consolation and mitigating misfortune. Elevated feeling generates high thought and high thought guarantees the elevation of existence. Let us feel good. Let us reflect well. Let us ensure the good on the road that we are invited to travel. In reality, thought is the cause of action, but feeling is the vibrating mode in which thought is formed. Feeling, as we feel, we model ideas. As we think, we create our destiny. Pay attention to mental hygiene. However, let us not forget that the house, as bright and clean as it may be, it will not live happily without food. And goodness is the bread of the soul. For this reason, the Divine Master recommended us his imperishable lesson. Love one another as I have loved you. All of us. Many elements you may have heard somewhere, but we're going to focus on the elements that are quite new. First, he talks about vibrations. Okay, so let us now go back to the source of it all. Who are we? Spirits. When Kardec asked in the first chapter of the Spirit's book, very first part of the Spirit's book, it repeats several instances, much of this information, but there's one particular question. It asks, what is Spirit? And the Spirit say, for lack of better words, it's like a flame. So you and I, are like this flame. How cool is that? As a flame, we radiate, we vibrate. It's dynamic. We're enveloped by the spiritual body, connected to the physical body, but we are not within this physical body. We're connected to it. This physical body is like a puppet. 
moving as we think, as we feel. So the flame radiates. Because of the level of our evolution, we have our natural vibratory tone. The more we evolve, the more we vibrate in higher frequencies and we can reach farther places. Of course, the spiritual body is enveloping us in its semi matter. It's also under the loss of gravity. So the density of our spiritual body depends on our evolution. The more we evolve, the more ethereal our spiritual body is, the pair spirit, the lighter it becomes for us to live. We're less materialized, more ethereal. So our vibrations will dictate feelings. Our feelings will dictate thinking patterns. Our thinking patterns are going to create attitudes and thus destiny. Just like what Emmanuel says in the book, Thought in Life, chapter one. So it's important to know what we're feeling in the concept of emotional intelligence. We can, we come to know that we, to be emotionally intelligent, we need to monitor what we feel, what others feel, to keep track and know the difference and know what to do with it, what to think, what to feel. Let's say you open the news and people are saying, Everybody is going to be contaminated by the coronavirus. And you're like, are you going to buy into that? Breathe. First thing, people throw hot potato on you. You say, not necessarily I'm going to catch it. If I do, not necessarily I'm going to hold on to this. Breathe. And think. Doesn't make any sense. Why? People may, everybody will at some point be exposed if they were not. They will be exposed. But to be contaminated and sick doesn't happen like this. Why? Because of the law of the mental field. Not everybody's vibrating at that frequency. So it doesn't make any sense. Any sense. But you see, somebody threw emotions on, onto you. And what you're going to do? Be contaminated? Emotional contagion? Or say, no, I decide what's going to happen here, what I'm going to keep inside of me. And that's why we need the higher spirits, our connection with God, to really feel like we're dependent on God, but we're not dependent in that way from anybody else. Look at Jesus, our guide and model. Many people didn't understand him, and yet he showed to us that it's possible to be independent of people while we're dependent on God. You've never heard of Jesus saying, I can't stand you anymore. You're making me so mad. Like people say to you, right? You're making me mad. Like, you want to be mad. I'm not making you mad. Right? You decide to be mad. People may tease you. They may poke you. But not necessarily you are going to feel what they want you to feel. It's a training. So he says here, the soul produces the subtle patterns that guide us in our daily activities. So we are going to produce the patterns that will guide our daily activities. What does he mean? Our vibratory tone, our level of evolution is going to bring us to attract what we have emitted. Love the mental field. 
oh, why am I friends with this person? Why am I in this country? Why? There are reasons I attracted it. I attracted it. And if I want to change, I need to change within myself, deep within. He says, thought is the matrix that compose our being. And it's going to create infinite manifestations. So as we feel, as we vibrate, we feel and we think, we create our lives. So if the life we have created is not pleasant, it's because we have been vibrating that unpleasantness for the longest time. Like you feel people don't accept you for who you are, but do you accept people for whom they are? Or, or you are trying always to emanate this disapproval and then we receive is approval. Am I emitting acceptance? Or am I emitting lack of acceptance, intolerance? Feeling, feeling comes before any elaboration of mental order. So it's so so, 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 so important to do this self-knowledge regarding our emotional life. Not only in the present, but from the past, in this life as well, in previous lives, especially this life. Because the inner child is still there. The child of this reincarnation is still present. There is no past for our minds. We need to go there and talk to this child and say, look, I understand how you're feeling, but look, I'm here validating you now. Now we are, I am the adult and I'm telling you, you're great. You're loved and appreciated. Otherwise, that inner child in us will continue to whine, to feel more adapted, and create consequences for it in the relationships, in our health. So she, he says, we will be identified by the radiations we emanate. So the flower emanates perfume. The star radiates light. And you, what do you emanate? That's going to be our exercise in the next 24 hours to fill the blank. I radiate blank. It could be 10,000 things. I emanate blank. This is our exercise in the next 24 hours to identify what is characteristic of us. There are people, you come closer to them, they radiate joy. Yay, it's joy, it's hope. And there are people who are always, like you come close, they're always like Mrs. No, Mr. No, right? It's always like no grumpiness, gloominess. What about you? What have you been emanating? What have we been emanating? This is our homework. Because what we radiate, what we send out, what we emanate is going to make associations, connections. And that's why he says, we absorb ideas, we assimilate ideas, and we externalize ideas, which is thoughts and feelings. So, what am I emanating? Then I will know what I'll be attracting. And then I will know what I'm absorbing. Because it's about frequency. 
And that's going to characterize the victory in our lives, he says. Many people say, I don't know why my life is this way. Millennia. Millennia of that type of work. And now, patience, calm, resignation. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's always a moment in which we say enough is enough. I need to move on and I need to start fresh. No matter if I'm still resenting the consequences of my actions, I'm planting new seeds. So what do you want to emanate? So part one is emanate. Okay, let me see if I can do something here to make it more special. Let me see. No, I can't. That's okay. Oh, I can. Let me see if I can. Share the screen. Yes. And I'm going to say, number one, I have been emanating and then blank. Okay. This is the exercise. It's like we're in a classroom. Exercise for the ne next 24 hours. And then the second part of this exercise is what do I want to emanate or radiate in my life? Okay, this is the exercise just to make it easier on us. All right, good, that's a good exercise for us. All right, what have I been radiating? What have I been emanating? Because now we're going to identify. And as we identify it, we're going to live better. He says here, it's super important for us to know of ourselves. Now, the second part of this message talks about what certain common feelings represent. And he begins talking about hatred. And people say, I don't feel hatred. I think we do. I'll give an example. You have a family and let's say a relative of yours makes a big mistake against somebody you love, which is so common. And then you are enraged. And if you could, you would go there and do something. And it escalates sometimes. It's anger, wrath, sometimes hatred. It's true. That's why all us as a wonderful spirit instructor says that hatred is like a hyena. You know hyenas, animals? If you watch the Lion King, you're going to see what hyenas are. They spread terror and death. So hatred doesn't bring any good to us. We need to cool it down to transform it. Envy. All of this is talking about feelings that are the most common to humanity. Envy. Oh yeah, people envy. Because sometimes you have a pen that people don't have. You put a lipstick because you use earrings or because you have a book or a phone or a car. Envy. It's like a serpent that crawls emitting rays of poisonous magnetism. Read a manual series 2,000 years ago, 50 years later, you're gonna see how envy is dangerous. Jealousy looks like a famished wolf. 
that thing that happens in families, that happens in spirit centers. You give more attention to somebody and somebody is like, oh, it doesn't give attention to me. It's not the same. That's jealousy. It's bad. It extends distress and mistrust. We, mistrust. we need to take care of that and heal it. Heal it. Aggressiveness. It's like a hedgehog. Hurling thorns in the direction of those who breathe their presence. All these feelings that are so common, violence, etc. But then he talks about the beautiful ones. And now it's an invitation to you and me. Love, like the sun. Illuminates and warms. Understanding, like a water spring. Friendly and refreshing. Fraternal tolerance, like a tree that serves and helps. Kindness, the sister of constructive music. Elevated feelings, generating high thoughts and elevating our existence. Let us feel good to reflect the good and ensure the good in the road where we invited to travel. This word, invited to travel. This morning I was listening to a beautiful podcast from a friend in Brazil that talks about many are invited, few are chosen. Jesus said, and you know, I just see here a beautiful bird, a blue jay, right by the window, right now. They were talking about this. What a joy. He came precisely when we were talking about these beautiful feelings, showing to us that it's worthwhile investing in the good. It feels so good. And it's about being invited. We're being invited to be with those people in our homes, yeah, work, in the country where we're in, if you're the person who says, I am not born in this country, I don't want to stay here. You are not the nationality of this life. That's materialism. We need to raise above it. You're invited to love whomever God is sending to you, your way. To love, to do what you'd like to receive. So thought is the cause of action, but feeling is the cause of the cause. We model the idea with our feelings and our thoughts generate our destiny. So he says, work on mental hygiene, but nourish yourself with the bread of goodness. Kind of great. The bread of the soul. Yes, right here, Kardec Radio. So in the next 24 hours, we need to evaluate what we have been emitting and what we actually want to emit to attract better circumstances in our lives. Feeding our souls with the good. Feeding our souls with the good. So we can generate the good wherever you are, including to yourself. All right, so now we are going to say a prayer. Emitting this good wherever we are. The good feels so good that this blue jay that came here, I can't believe it, came right here to say to you that it's worthwhile doing the good. Being good. Shall we? Now we're going to ask Chopin, who was, remember the book, Memoirs of a Suicide. It's right there. By the way, if you want to watch or listen to our previous programs, just go to YouTube channel at Kardec Radio. We have all the playlists there. And we have also on SoundCloud more than 4,000 podcasts for you. Go there. Beautiful hosts, beautiful messages, beautiful programs to nourish our souls with the good. Listen to that, watch that, share the news. 
don't worry about this news that people produce because they don't even know what they're saying. They're just saying it. Right? Ready? Chopin. Let us then feel the invitation to work with our guardian angels. Dear loving spirit protectors, guides of our lives, thank you for this moment of wisdom brought by the spirit all of us through Chico Xavier. But thank you for our health, for being able to be here with you and with one another, forming this connection of love amongst ourselves. We pray that everyone here feels healing energies, illuminating them, healing their emotions and opening new horizons of feelings, of ideas for a better attitude and thus a happier destiny. Thank you, God. And so be it. It feels good. I love being here with you. I love this feeling of learning together. And of course, any question, I'll be responding to you as we finish this. And feel free to write to us at cardiacradio.com where we're always nourishing our souls. Thank you, friends. Until tomorrow, God willing. <laughs>